Hey there, this is Bob from Wham's Tech, and we're going to continue on with our Glide gamification tutorial. This one's all going to be about booster packs, card packs, item packs, treasure chests, whatever you want to call it. Basically, being able to discover multiple items from a single purchase in your shop, right? Um, for this one, I'm not going to build it live. I'm going to explain it live. Reason being is that it's a little complicated, and I'm afraid that um, as I destroy things to rebuild it, I'm going to mess something up. So I really, it's not saying I got it working. Um, I really just show you what I did. I'm going to take it very slow uh, so that way you can follow along. Feel free to pause the video every time I show something so you can rebuild it for yourself on your side. All right, very first thing we have to do is build in our card packs. So I went to the store the shop in our spreadsheet here and I created uh, a three card booster pack and a five card booster pack. All right. And I have some item names. I have the description for get three items or get five items, right? I have the cost here. Uh, probably this should be double or probably more than just 12, right? For a more than a five card. I have the rank requirement needed in order to buy a, a booster pack. Um, I have the image that I just found online of this card pack, which looks like this, right? All right, and then afterwards, what you need to do is create a column here called available in pack. And what this is gonna do is be a true false of whether or not you want any of your other items to be included in this card pack, okay? So you don't want to have your card packs be a part of the pack unless you want them to be able to win card packs from card packs? Probably not, right? So I'm just checking all the boxes of the items that I want to have as part of a particular card pack. All right. Uh, afterwards, I create a second column here called how many cards are in the pack. So because this is a three card card pack, I have three. And this is a five card card pack, so I have five. All right, simple so far. All right, the trickiest one here is what I need to do is to create a sequence of numbers from one to the maximum amount of items that are available in a pack. So I have here eight total items. Two of them are card packs. So I have six available items that can be won from card packs. And so I need to have the numbers one through six spread out here um, in sequence, in order, let's say, all right? But uh, I want to skip any items that are not part of the card pack. I'm not gonna bore you with how I created this formula, all right? I'm gonna show it on the screen right here. Um, I'm also going to put this in the description of this video. Feel free to just copy it and paste it into the column header of one of your columns here. Essentially what this is doing is it's looking up the row ID, or sorry, the row number. So this would be two, this would be three, this would be five, this would be seven, eight, and nine. Okay, It's looking up that row number and spitting back if it's not checked. Uh, a sequence of one through the maximum amount of items that are checked. Okay, so again, that's the formula, and I have a sequence now, one through six. Okay, and you can see how this works, because if I make this one not available in the pack, you see it now goes one through five. Oop, I like that, okay. So you see it's one through five, right? And it's skipping all of the blanks. I had a checkbox, now it's one through six, and it's including all, the, all of the checkboxes. All right, the reason why we have this happening is because I want to associate this number with, an, with a random between, all right? We're gonna choose a number between one and the maximum amount of numbers in this column here. It's gonna pick that number and, be, and that becomes our random item that's being assigned that's going to be one from this card pack all right so again here's the formula for the sequence of one through the maximum amount of checked boxes skipping all the ones that are not checked and this formula here is really should be included i'm going to just do this real fast should be included in the header i'm going to cut that delete 
enter and equals we'll do a little bit of this a little bit of that there we go all right so this is going to be a random between the minimum of this number of the sequence which is one and the maximum of the sequence which is six so it's going to choose a number at random between one and six and display it in any of the cells where um, where this is blank? Yes, so it's going to put a random number between one and six in any of the cells where this is blank. See that? So um, if I, and what's nice is that the ran between formula changes these numbers on every time the sheet is edited, right? So if I just come over here and just start typing spaces, See that, how the numbers change at random? Okay, and so we're gonna leverage this randomness as part of which card is going to be opened during our card pack. Okay, uh, and this one we're gonna delete. That's just, that was my test. So every time the sheet is edited, the number changes, which is nice. All right, so a little bit of setup here. Again, just to see those formulas, in case you want to pause. This is the sequence, one through six. And this is the random um, selector of any of the column J that are blank. Okay, so now each card pack, which is on rows four and six, have an associated number and this number corresponds to one of the numbers, one through six, of one of the items that's available in the pack. All right, so what we're gonna do is now create a relation between this random number and the item in order to select that item as part of our card pack. All right, so our next step is to make that relation between this random item number and the item number of our sequence that corresponds to the item in the pack. So back in our app, we're gonna come over here to the store in our data editor, and we're gonna make that relation. So I create a new column, and I'm calling it relationship to random item. Okay. Where I'm matching that random number, so that's the one that gets generated from that ran between formula, and I'm relating it back to itself, back to the store, right, which is the sheet I'm currently on, to this non-card pack row number, which is the column of our sequence one through the maximum amount of items checked, all right? And so it's basically relating one to one and one to one, all right? And so what you'll see here is that for each of our card packs, right, it's relating this one to this number one here and it's gonna spit back a relationship of the first row. So you see that the first item is this C, five, B, S, B, A, right? Right, which happens to be the item ID of our um, first row. So it knows that our random item is this row lumber, okay? So that's what you see here. Okay, next, uh, we're gonna do a lookup of this relation to grab just the item ID. Because this is just the relation, we need the actual item ID from the column. So I do a lookup to grab the item ID of that random relation. And you see, again, it spits back that C5B, C5B, which is the item ID of that first item in our sequence one through six, which happens to be lumber, all right? So basically for each of our card packs now, we have the random ID being lumber that's associated. All right, now I've already gone through and purchased this three card card pack. It's available in my transactions. It's there at the very bottom here, as you can see, okay. And the next thing I do is I have a, uh, a lookup called random item ID, all right? So back in our store, each of our card packs has associated to it the next item that's randomized, right? And I wanna grab that and bring it into my transaction. 
And uh, what I do is I already have a relationship to the store that we did in one of our first videos where we pulled in the image and the description from the, trans from the store to the transaction log. And so I'm leveraging that now to also do a lookup here, which I'm calling random item ID from the relationship to shop. And I'm grabbing that random item ID of this card back. So you see, again, you see the C5BSBA. All right, so now I'm doing a relation of this item, okay, back to the store where it's matching the item ID. So I call it relationship to card pack item. Again, I'm matching the lookup back to the store and I'm grabbing the item ID, okay? And then I have a lookup of the item name and the item image of this ID. All right, so what this is doing now is for my transaction, for my card pack, I now have the name of the item and the image of the item and the ID of the item um, at random associated to my purchase. All right. Now, this is a three card card pack, but this is only one random item. So how are we going to be able to get three items at random? Well, the, f the best way I figured out how to do this would be to unpack one card at a time from this pack. And then uh, I'm gonna use this information to add it back to the transactions just like we did with our crafting, right? Our crafting, we used some trickery here to uh, create an item and then add it to our transaction log. We're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna use this information, which is our random item ID, the random item, right? Uh, and add this back to a new transaction in our log. So we have to do a form button for that. So I'm gonna go to my layout. I'm gonna go to my inventory. Okay. And here I see my three card booster pack. Okay. And I don't want them to use the card pack because using it will remove it. And it's kind of confusing because maybe we have I don't want the students or my users thinking they could use the card pack and then not get anything out of it, right? So I turn the switch off here if this cards in pack, which is that number three or that number five that we have in our spreadsheet is empty. So it only shows it if it's not a card pack basically, okay? All right, instead now what I did is I created a form button here called unpack and this form button only shows up if it's a card pack. So it only shows up when this cards in pack, which again is this number, I'll show you here, this cards in pack, which is the number of cards available in that pack, if it is not empty, which means if it's a card pack, show this button. All right, I'll talk about these other two in just a second. I'm gonna talk about this one now, I guess. Um, I also showing it when, the user's inventory slots available. So I scroll all the way down, user, user's inventory slots available, which is somewhere over here, yep. Uh, must be greater than zero because I don't want them unpacking cards and or unpacking items if they don't have the space in their inventory to do so. So once they start unpacking items, once they reach their inventory, then the unpack button will be hidden and they'll have to drop items in order to unpack more items to their inventory. All right, this last item here is showing this, show the unpack button when the cards left in pack, which we haven't yet created, I'll talk about this in a second, doesn't equal zero. So we have to be able to count down, right? Because this is a three card pack. I shouldn't have them be able to unpack an unlimited amount of items. There has to be a countdown. So once that countdown equals zero, then this button goes away. All right, so we have to create that countdown. We also have to create that transaction. Anyway, so we have a form button here, and this form button is going to add that random item to the transaction log and associate it to the person who's viewing the card pack. So let's configure that now. Again, this is a form button. I'm gonna go ahead and press on it. Uh, I added a fancy little animated GIF of a card pack being opened. This is from the game Hearthstone, if you're familiar. Okay, and um, I have Nothing for them to fill out. It's just all automatic columns that are being added back to the transactions. OK, 
Okay, so our destination sheet is the transactions because we want that random item to be included in the transaction log so it shows up in our inventory. All right, so the column um, is going to be the random item ID that we grabbed uh, or that we created from the lookup. So that lookup of that random item ID, which in this case happens to be lumber, right, is gonna become the new SKU of the item. The random item name, which again, it was a lookup, is going to be item, the item name. The email address of the person viewing this right now, the special value, will become the email. The current date and time becomes the timestamp. And then the last thing we have to do is be able to keep track of whether or not this item comes from a card pack. So uh, what I did is I created a column called used pack, okay? And I created this column as a text column in the transactions log. All right, so in my transactions sheet, Okay. I created a column here called used pack. And what this is going to do, it's going to write the item ID of the card pack. So of that three card card pack or the five card card pack, right? That item ID, it's going to write that to this column called used pack. So now we can keep track, right, of whether or not this item comes from a card pack. So now that we have that in place, uh, you can see here that I'm adding the row ID of that transaction, and I'm adding it to the used pack. All right. So when I hit submit here, what ends up happening is in my transactions log, okay, I now see that the lumber item, right, and the SKU of the lumber, which is the C5BS that we've been seeing so far, right, uh, gets added to the transaction log. There is no cost because um, it was opened from a card pack. And in the used pack, I now have this 9FLMO, which happens to be the row ID of the card pack that I purchased. Okay, so now every time I open up another card, let's fill out that form again. So again, I have... Uh, Oh, because I ran out of inventory space. All right, let's do this again. I'm going to drop this item just so you see it. Tent. Okay. All right, so again, for when I go to unpack a new card here, all right, so my transaction ID of this card pack becomes the use pack. I can submit. Okay, and you see that uh, I now have a new random ID. I have a new item here, right, with a new SKU. And we see that the row ID, okay, of this um, 9FLMOJ, okay, gets again added as the use pack. So again, we're keeping track of how many times that card pack has been used. A little complicated, I know. Now, how did it award me a new item here? Well, it's because, again, every time your spreadsheet is changed, that random between formula generates a new number, right? And then which because it generates a new number, it gets associated to a new item as part of our relation. Um, and so here now I have linen, right? If I come back to the store, I now see that the next random item is gonna be number six, which is the one we just did in our last video, mind control. I definitely want a mind control. So I'm gonna unpack another card here Okay. I'm going to submit, and I already know it's going to be mind control because the random number in my spreadsheet told me so. Oh, it says lumber. Did I edit something? Oh, that's so sad. Oh, that's so sad. I wanted mind control. Oh, well. I must have changed something when I switched over. Anyway, so now I have three cards that were unpacked. This is an inline list of my used pack. Okay, I'll talk about that in a second uh, to see how many cards were unpacked here. All right, so we have three items in our transaction. One, two, and three, right? That each have this um, item ID. Where is that at? Under the used pack. Used pack. There 
it is. All right, one, two, and three. And now I need to keep track of how many times this pack was used. So after this use pack column, which we created in the spreadsheet, I create a relation column called used pack, and I'm relating the row ID to the transactions, which is our current sheet, used pack. So I'm relating it back to itself within the same sheet. Um, so this row ID, in this case, is going to be the card pack that I purchased, right? This N or 9FLMO, and it's relating that 9FLMO ID to the transaction sheet, to the used pack column, and I'm matching multiple. So I see here, this was the card pack that I, that I purchased. I have a relation because the 9FLMO is matching these three items. And I should have three items here. One, two, and three. All right. And so now, because I can tell how many items are here in my relation, I can create a roll-up column, and I call it Cards Unpacked. So I created a new column here. It was a roll-up column. And I'm summarizing the values of this relationship used pack column. Uh, and I'm grabbing the row ID, which is fine. And I'm counting how many times this row ID occurs. In this case, one, two, and three, All right? So there's three items here. And so now I know that there, uh, I, have a, I have a counter now, right? So if I don't open up anything, this number would be zero. After the first one, it would be one. After the second number, it'd be two. And after the third number, it's three. Just to prove that to you, in my transactions, I'm going to go ahead and delete my latest two card openings to simulate the fact that I have not yet opened up the second and the third time. We should see this relationship switch to one item, and this switches to one. Oh, and of course, my sheet is refreshing. Okay, so here is my relation. We see that there's only one card that I've opened so far, All right? All right, next, um, I want to figure out how many cards I have remaining to open. So that's just a simple um, math formula, right? And I'm going to edit, I'll just show you the math, the, what it's going to be. Uh, this is going to be the cards, and then cards in pack. And I'm subtracting the cards in pack from this number, right? Uh, we already showed how many cards are in the pack here, right? Three. That was part of our transaction sheet, okay? And um, then we're taking three minus the one to equal two cards left, all right? So this cards left in pack is, when it, once it hits zero, then as we saw before, we can add that as one of our visibility conditions for that unpack form button uh, to hide, right? So once this equals zero, that unpack button goes away. All right, so just so you see that again, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, unpack Another card, it's gonna be random, so inventory, um, three card booster pack, I'm gonna unpack, yes, submit, and I got another lumber. All right, so if I come back over here to my data editor, I should now see that the numbers switch, right? So now I've opened up two cards, I have one card remaining, Let's open up the last item here. So I hit back, unpack, submit. Oh, how unlucky, I get three lumbers in a row. Oh, it's random, one through six. You need a lot of lumber apparently. But anyway, um, then you see that the form button goes away because that number has reached zero. Now, once the card pack has been used up, right? Uh, then we want to hide the card pack from our inventory. So um, all of our, all of our uh, items or all of our conditionality for hiding items from our inventory is all within that if is in inventory, if then else column in our transaction sheet here. So I'm going to come over here to the if or is in inventory, edit, and I'm going to create one that says, if the cards left in pack equals zero, that math column, right, which takes the cards in pack minus the count. Um, if it equals zero, 
then false. And so now that card pack, which is, um, if I scroll down here. So because this now has a card pack of left is, is zero, right? That should now equal false in our if then else, and it does, which means it should now be hidden from our inventory. So if I hit back, it should be gone, and it is. So you see the card pack no longer exists. All right, so let's go ahead and try that again, just to show you everything works. I'm gonna use my lumber, drop my lumber, drop my lumber. All right, I'm going to go to the store. I'm gonna buy a three card booster pack. I'm gonna purchase the item, submit. Uh, in my inventory, I now see my three card booster pack along with the unpack form button because the number has not yet reached zero. I'm gonna unpack, submit, and I got linen this time. Yes, all right. Now you see, uh, the last thing I didn't show you here is how to create this relation. Now, this relation we created called the rel used pack. This was in our transactions log, right? The rel used pack. I showed you it here. Uh, again, this is relating the item ID of the uh, transaction of the card pack back to itself, right? The row ID to the transactions back to itself to the used pack um, submission column. And I'm matching multiple. That's where we're also getting the roll up and that kind of thing. So now I'm just displaying this relation as an inline list. So it's an inline list and it's that relationship to used pack which should be the only multiple relation that we've created in this transaction sheet. Okay. And I'm just adding the item and the item image. I'm doing tiles. You could do cards if you wanted to. Okay. I'm doing tiles because that way I can show a few at a time here. And then I'm displaying them uh, horizontally, actually. So that way, if you have like a 10 card booster pack, um, they'll all, you can like scroll through them horizontally in order to show all the items. And it's a square. And if they click on it, it shows the actual item here. So if they wanted to, they could actually use or drop the item right from here if they wanted to. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and unpack a new card. Submit. And I get paper this time. All right. I really want that mind control. All right. So let's unpack another card at random. Come on, mind control. Yes! My control! <laughs> Hooray! Look at that. Awesome. All right, so now I can no longer unpack any cards. Uh, so I have to, if I go back, I should, now my, I should now see that the card pack goes away, and now I have some mind control. Yeah. All right, so there you have it. Booster packs. Complicated, but doable. So... You'll probably have to watch this video several times in order to get um, all of the uh, formulas down and that kind of thing. But again, look at the description in the video below for those formulas and take your time, ask questions, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Stay tuned.